uh, my name is Robert Quinton. I am based here in New York and my color is red. And red, people who have red as their color in, in the management by strength or management by scripture profile um, are usually very direct um, and to the point. And I can say, yeah, I'm kind of like that. I am direct. I am to the point. I like to just speak and without all the fluff, with all, all the, you know, a lot of words, I guess. Um, generally, they don't mince words. The focus is on, for them, is on the big picture. The focus is on is getting the jobs done, very results-oriented. Um, we they, they are confident in their ability to get the job done, whatever whatever it is. You know, if you ask them to do a task of any kind, they they will get that task done. The red kind of personality um, in terms of a team atmosphere is, I would say, give me the task, let me just run with it. You know, you don't need to look over my shoulder. You don't need to try to manage, micromanage me. Just give me the task. I'll run with it. The focus of this temperament is results and control. So if you want the direct person to listen to you, they need to understand quickly what will they get out of the suggestion. That's the result. And then what options or choices do they have? In a business setting, if I go to a direct person and say, I need you to fill out this form and have it on my desk every Tuesday, I can't do my job till you turn this in, it's, that's not an effective way to communicate with the direct person because I'm not explaining you know, what they would get out of it. In other words, you know, how does it affect their results? But if I say to the direct person, I, I need this form on Tuesday so we can cut your check by Friday, usually I get the form on Monday. <laughs> it's called return on investment. You mean when I do this, I get to do that? Why didn't you just say so? Now, the other part of the focus here for the direct person is control. They need choice. That's why the word should is not ever, never going to be a good word to use. But that word at the very top of page 14 there, the word consider, is a very positive word. So if you say to the direct person, consider how this can help, why is that better than if you would have said, this is what you should do? The word consider allows for what? Maybe choice. As long as the direct person has some choice, what about those of you that are red? Does it happen in your life someone was telling you this is what you should do and you knew down inside probably what I ought to do, but if they weren't giving you any choice and you found yourself resisting the suggestion, even though you knew it's probably what you ought to do? Haven't you been there and done that at least once? That's just your temperament trying to control you. That's all. That's why you got angry. In our general description of the directness, one of the things of the descriptors is candid. And this is usually where the direct person's misunderstood because sometimes we take their candor how? We take it as criticism. How ironic that is because the last thing the direct person would want to do is turn you off. If they turned you off, they wouldn't get what? They wouldn't get results. But if we take it as criticism, what happens to us personally? We become defensive. Defensiveness usually results when people feel criticized. So you don't want to be distracted by the candor of the direct person. All right. All right. How else do we describe the direct person? Problem solver. They love to figure things out. They like to have projects handed to them, let them kind of do it their way. Sometimes they'll break it so they can fix it. So how do you know you're dealing with a direct person? They tend to get right to the point. They're not shy about expressing their opinion. They can make strong comments. But here's what gives it away almost always. They've got a serious look on their face. If you're red, during the week, someone's just liable to say to you, are you mad? Is there something wrong? And every time you hear this, you think, why do people ask me that? I'm not mad. Should I be? You know? Got that serious look on your face. Firm handshake. Suggest how to get things done. You walk in a confident manner. You may be lost, but you're confidently lost. You don't, you don't look lost. You look like you own the building. You frequently use the word I in conversation. You're talking to singular, I this or I that. doesn't mean you're more selfish. Extroverts talk in the plural, we this, we that. You're thinking, who's he with? He's by himself. <laughs> so it's easy to recognize these folks, all right? When it comes to gestures, do they talk to you like this? Or do they have a tendency to point? They have a tendency to point. So you have two direct people having a conversation. Looks like they're having some sort of a sword fight. I told you, <laughs> I told you. And then they go to lunch together. They're really not upset with each other. Just their way of expression.